We're going to go over shading real quick here in Blender. We're going to start with the default cube, and by default, it's shaded flat. So actually, if you go into edit mode, go to the drop down at the top right, you should find this even in Blender 4.2. You can toggle on the binormals or the split normals. And you can see right here, they're all split up like so. There's three splits for each vertex right now. If we were to actually shade this smooth and go into edit mode, they combine together. All right, so that's the difference between shade smooth and shade auto smooth, right? If we shade auto smooth, set it to 180, we'll get the same result. We can actually go in here, we can hit control E and we can mark sharps. And this is what's going to split it apart. Sharps is splitting it basically. So when you shade flat, shade auto smooth, it's kind of splitting them without you realizing it's doing it. It's not marking the edges sharp necessarily, but that's what it's doing. And that's what smooth by angles does in 4.2 as well. The modifier, it's just splitting it the same way. So split normals control your shading for the most part and how this all plays together is what creates good looking or bad looking shading on your models. And so every vertex is gonna have a split normal basically. So if it's sharp or not, entirely up to how you model it, right? And what modifiers you might be using. One of those modifiers happens to be weighted normals. So if I add a bevel here and do a little chamfer like this, and I add a weighted normal modifier, we can also use sharps and we can use face influence. And what we're looking at here, if I turn on the end result, this is what it would look like without the modifier. And this is what the modifier does. It just fluctuates these out. So it's face weighting these normals, basically. And you could think of it like this. Um, if this, this whole model is face weighted at medium right now with 50 weight on everything. If we use face influence, and I hit Alt N, set face strengths to strong, you'll see they straighten out even more. Okay. And so that's just going to be a heavier face weight now. So it's like setting it to 100, basically. All right. That's what that modifier does. Now, there's going to be times you're working on objects for games that you're absolutely going to want to have control over your shading. And so if I create something like this, let's say we're doing a prop, and we're going to use normal maps on a, with a trim sheet, right? Doing texturing and all that. All right. We might shade something like this auto smooth and even mark everything sharp. But maybe right here, we don't want it sharp, so we clear the sharp. We get something like this going on. We need to create custom normals sometimes. And in Blender, it's really hard to create custom normals, in my opinion. The tools aren't that robust for it, but we can still do it. So we select like this face, and we'll see that these split normals are going up and out to the right, like so. And this one's going out to the right at the bottom, like the way we might want it. But in reality, when you got the normal map on it, usually those are meant to be used, like um, the normal maps project top to bottom, left to right, uh, with the normals. And so when you look at something like this, it'll be pulling light from kind of behind it almost in a way because they're going up at a 45 degree angle, right? So they're doing something like that. But we want that normal map to look good from this direction. So we got to rotate these, right? And you can rotate these. You can grab the face, hit Alt N. And you're probably used to flipping and recalculating outside and inside. But you can also adjust these split normals by doing rotate. If we press all in and press rotate, we can do this number. All right, so that's just one way you can tweak these things is by rotating them manually. If we look at that over in the other view, you'll see it's actually changing the shading. Okay, now here, we can also hit all in and point to target. There's different ways you can utilize this one at the bottom of the screen. There's all kinds of little options you can play around with. Uh, but the one we're gonna use is just by pressing M and using the mouse. And so you can see we can have them point towards the mouse. We can actually just send it out to the right and just keep going basically. And so you'll see the other numbers here. We can zero out and we'll have it pointed out that way. And maybe we want these to be parallel with each other. We can actually align these as well. So these will become parallel with each other. Okay. If you want to bump this number up higher, they'll become straighter and straighter basically. So if you just want to type in like some really large value, they'll become perfectly flat for the most part. All right. But now we fluctuated that. So this is shading this way. So that's creating custom normals, okay? Or split normals, custom shading. Whenever you create custom shading, if you try something like Shade Auto Smooth again later on, it's not gonna do anything. And so it's not gonna update. In your data properties here, you can go to geometry data, and whenever you create the custom normals, you have to clear this sometimes to make things work again. So Shade Auto Smooth, Weighted Normals, you might have to clear that out, all right? So just keep that in mind. A lot of this has to do with your modeling as well. So just want to cover this real quick. We're not going to go too in depth with this. 
you want to start making something cool and you start doing some modeling you do something like this perhaps and say so we pull these out all right you see how we got bad shading here so at the end of the day your models are triangulated and so this is what we're actually looking at if we had triangulated it there's a hidden kind of edge in there basically every face does that and because this is a, not a flat face it has that little kind of edge there where it actually is triangulated right so it's not always the fault of the binormals or the split normals it's sometimes it's just your modeling you need to try to make sure that it's not always possible and it's not always needed to keep things completely flat planar faces but it could be useful to do that so just fluctu fluctuating the position around here you can see we can start to flatten it out more usually the best way to go about doing it the reason i want to mention doing it manually like that is because if you were to try to use like the autocorrect setup for that perhaps um, if we were to go select it all mesh go to uh, cleanup you can see we can make planner faces here uh, we could utilize this but a lot of times it makes other faces non-planner but if you jump the iteration count up eventually it'll work it all out till it's planner but it, um, it would kind of change the shape dramatically in some cases so you know doing things manually getting it well enough usually works out better when doing that okay now another chance to use custom normals i'm just going to talk about so when you're doing foliage so if we're making like trees or whatever a lot of times they are on cards so they're just little pictures of branches with leaves and you model them out as little planes like this okay i'll put a couple more in here why not we'll just make a mess of stuff it's usually something along these lines like this and um, it can be a little hard to set up sometimes but you got to make them look pretty and make them like nice little bouquets if you would i guess anyways but anyways the the main idea is that this is how you would do foliage grass patches tops of trees things like that branches and a lot of times these are double-sided renders so i'm going to turn pack face colon off for, for now and so we can see both sides all right and so you see the normals here where they're seeking in all different directions all right now a lot of times this is why you have like a dark side and a really bright side dark side really bright sides this looks terrible in a game environment it looks terrible in renders and so a lot of times you need to customize these normals as well so if you hit alt n you'll see we have some other options in here one of those happens to be point to target which is quite useful so we can hit alt n point to target and we can direct these out in the direction we need to go sometimes this is really hard to control it doesn't always work out the way you think it should um, but you can all in point to target and you can also do sphere rise and so sphere rise will let you kind of fluctuate them like this right and so you can do things like this as well and you can change these position values we can also align these if we wanted as well or try to invert them even you see so just keep that in mind. There are some options here available for you to, to utilize these tools. Uh, you'll have to play around with them, get a hang of using them. They don't always behave the way you expect them to. Uh, but once we do that, you'll notice the bright and dark patches kind of, uh, they're not as bad now, basically. And the reason for that is just simply, these things are now trying to seek light out from different directions towards the top, as opposed to to the left and the right right so it's a much more predictable kind of shading for the foliage anyways you might do this on things like hair cards for characters as well it's a possibility um, it's just depends on the, your geometry needs if something's not looking right because of shading no matter what you do it's you could try using custom normals now there's something called data transfer as well which i'm not going to go over into this one but it basically it's taking the normals from one object and transferring them to a different object while it's a usable tool, it's useful in some situations um, when you're specifically doing like hard surface stuff like spaceships with windows cut out into a curve or whatever. Uh, it's really finicky to get right sometimes when you have a bunch of like different faces going in all different directions. It's um, something I try to avoid, I would say. A lot of times I find it's better to just do a little bit more correct modeling and try to avoid custom normals altogether if possible. Not always possible but if you can't model more correct you know you're gonna have a much better time 
with um with your geometry anyways and your shading and all that save that data transfer for like very specific use cases perhaps and um, i'll talk about that in another video perhaps later on but for now this is what shading and blender really is i mean it's very simple in nature uh, the other tools in here we got all kinds of other stuff in here like split this is almost like marking an edge sharp um, there's also merge which we'll talk about here just real quick you can't for example and try to get something going here real quick okay so we make like a shape like this just do these like this shade it auto smooth so like we could go through and um try to grab these areas and control e mark sharps split them right we can do things like that but let's say we wanted all those kind of like we did before when i'm all pointed out to the right sometimes when you try to rotate things like um let's just grab one real quick how did I turn my vertex normals on? Did I do that? With a hotkey or something? No. Okay, we got some blue edges in here. Where'd those things come from? All right. I'm not real sure where those came from. But anyways, let's say we're rotating one of these. Right? But it was a split normal, so let's mark a sharp here. A lot of this is distracting. Let me just get rid of it. Okay. So let's say, like, we're trying to rotate this vertex. And we're just rotating like this. You see, like, it moves as a group. Okay, so just keep in mind, a lot of times you got to select your mesh, press Y, and rip it. So it's just separated. It's not connected anymore. You'd have to merge it back together. So we can alt in and we can rotate when we have just the right vertex selected. Okay. So we don't adjust the other one. Basically that's all I'm trying to get at in the, in this example. Sometimes you have to select the mesh, the mesh here and press shift H to hide the rest. So you can grab the other ones perhaps you see, and now you can rotate just those ones. Maybe these other, other vertices and we can line those up now too. get it just about right. Yeah. So we can Alt H, bring back the mesh. And we'll have complete control in this sense. When you start splitting, it becomes a lot easier. If we press A, M, and merge by distance, sometimes these will shift around again. A lot of times it's because you don't have a sharp edge. You might want to mark sharp when merging. So press M, merge, check sharp, you know, create a sharp edge. Hopefully it won't shift it out of position for you. Um, but yeah, this is a possibility. Like you could do some edits this way as well. If you just want to rotate things like that. It's perfectly acceptable on uh, something like that, perhaps. So anyways, I just wanted to point that out when you merge Mark Sharps is there if you need it. Okay. And so that's custom normals, split normals, shading and blender. That's all it comes down to is those split normals really. And then, you know, if you don't want to use them, don't use them, but very simple, easy thing to understand, but nobody really shows it off, right? Like there's going to be times you need it. Now you know it exists. Whenever you find a need for it, you can use it. Okay. I'll check you out in the next one. Take care.